Now it says I'm live. Hey, Aunt Beck, can you see me? <laughs> okay, I don't know what's going on, but it was telling me that I wasn't live yet. But I have a comment that showed up, so I don't know what the deal is. And I've just been kind of fiddling around here. So um, I'm going to wait a couple more minutes, see if anybody should happen by while I get some more things pulled out. I'm totally confused. <clears throat> some people. Janet from across the sea and Aunt Beck. Aunt Beck, I don't know what was going on because I had not uh, clicked on live yet, but apparently you must have been seeing me. I don't really understand that, but that's okay. I'm just, I'm glad you're here. Glad you're all here. So I was just pulling some stuff out here and trying to decide what I was going to do this morning. I thought this might be a good time because I didn't see anyone else on yet. Thanks for sharing it, Beck. <laughs> Janet, we get our mornings and our afternoons so mixed up between between the sea. Huh, isn't that funny? I must have hit something that I didn't realize because I certainly didn't mean for it to be. That's cool. I'll have to pay more attention to that. Well, at least it's working. Sometimes I don't know. So I'm going to go ahead and start because I have several things I want to do today. I, on the last um, live, I was working on a cover for a sewing journal. And I just wanted it to look kind of like a crazy quilt. <laughs> Hi, Miss Gigi. It's almost too early in the morning for me. <laughs> Not really. I've been up for a while, but it takes a while to get my head all cleared out and everything. So I want to um, just show you what I did. And I have one more thing I want to do to this before I put it aside um, until it's ready to until it's time to put the book to put the journal together. And that looks loose. Hmm. So anyway, I was working on this last time, and I used these these cool fabrics that I got from uh, Melody, and um, used some uh, embroidery stitches on here. Um, I've added quite a bit since I was here the other day, and um, I think it's basically done. The only part that I'm really not happy with is right here. And it is just, you can see it's kind of loose. And I tried to put something else in there to kind of hide that, but I I didn't find anything that I liked. But I still feel like it's not totally done. So I think what I'm going to do, now this is a um, bead embroidered piece. I don't. It's kind of hard to tell because it's black. But it's a little cabochon with a um get it up as close as i can with a fairy on a butterfly now you can see it and um it's just a piece that i had started was in my stash of stuff and i decided to put it on here but i think what i want to do is put this around it this is just like a little bitty ball trim and I think I want to put that around it like this. 
sort of. And then I think I'll feel like it's finished. I thought about just doing it with beads, but I decided I want to use this little piece. What do you think? If I put that on there, is it going to look finished then? Or do you think I should leave it off? I don't know. I've been trying to decide. Yeah, I really like the Rick Rack too. And all I did was, um, let me hold it up. I hate holding it up, but you know, all I did was at each point and dip, I just did like two stitches with embroidery thread. Uh, can you see that? But I really like the way it looks. It was so simple. I was tempted to do more. And then this is fringe. Here's some fringe bead fringe and this is a uh, embroidered rose flower and we did this last time here's a little bug did a little bug and then the cabochon and the, this is some velvet ribbon here's another little um, hexy and I, I decided I was going to um, use some sari silk to go around the edge and I was just going to couch it down so that it would look kind of bumpy around the edge and you know but it I needed something to finish the edge off and I got oh, I did about this much and I didn't like it so I took that off and decided I wanted to put these flowers on here and I chose this trim because it's wide enough because it's light and it frames it first of all let me do this I just got this wrapped around here so I could see how it looked. And I decided I wasn't going to use this on the on this journal because I've got two of them, but I decided I did want it on this journal. So I needed something to separate all of this from all of this. So I used the white lace to frame it. So that was one reason I put the white there to really frame it a little bit more and separate it. And then I used this flower because it's wide and um, I could cover the edges real well with it. And then I put this on here. <clears throat> so that's what I've been doing with this. And um, I am going to, I'm not going to do it well, maybe I will do it right now to get it over with. I'm going to put it on here real quick. It shouldn't take very long. And I wanted to show you this. This is this is where I, my black and white thread when I'm normally using it. It's just a little pot, double pot, that um, I think it's meant to put like jams or something in. And um, I find them all the time. I've got another one just like this. Well, I used to when I'd go to the thrift stores. They have these all the time. And I use them to put my thread in so it's not, you know, rolling all over the place. So I put the spool of thread in, I bring the thread out and put the little lid on. And then I could just, you know, when I need, because a lot of times I'll use white or black thread. Or if I want, if I'm using some other colors, I do that with the other colors. That way I could just pull it and it's not rolling all around and I can keep track of it real easily. And, um... I think I'm just going to use some white thread. And I like the way um, quilting thread feels, machine quilting thread. I use it a lot for when I'm doing any kind of handwork. It's a stronger thread, but it's still fairly thin. <clears throat> I know, Janet, isn't it pretty? I saw it at, um, where did I see it? I guess, I think it was, oh yeah, I saw it at Hobby Lobby. And I just thought, oh my gosh, I have to have that. But it's it's pretty busy. It's pretty busy. Let's see.
Sometimes you just have to have it. Now, figuring out which is the right and wrong side is always the problem. I'm going to say it's this side. All right. I've got all this stuff done. I have to get up here or I can get to it. And this, this, uh, this, um, Cabochon. The cabochon is something that has a flat back. So this is a cabochon. It's a, I'm sure it's like resin or something like that. It's not, it's not a real carved piece. It's just, you know. And then it's beaded onto a piece of um, polyester felt, which you can get it. Um, they don't, every place doesn't have it, but you can usually get it at Joann's or Hobby Lobby. It's just a stiffer felt, and I, I always use it for backings. So the cabochon is um, stitched on with using these beads to hold it down, and I probably used a little bit of glue also. I usually do, so I'm assuming I did. And I'm just going around and um, get some of this out of the way. Let me see if I could bring this in. I know that they look so real and colorful. I mean, can't you just see all that in a drawer someplace where you can reach in there and grab it? <clears throat> see if I can do this and stay in frame at the same time. We'll be surprised, won't we? So I'm kind of in an awkward position because of everything already being stitched down, but most of it I did before I attached before I attached the part to the cover. I think this will make a nice little frame around this. It just looked a little undone to me. So I think I'm just going to do a little running stitch all the way around and then I'll go back and stitch it down real good. all the color they're so pretty they're not and they're not really uh they're not like photo realistic they almost look like uh they had some kind of filter applied to the picture so it, it just is really cool i like it and you could even cut out one of the spools and stitch it down if you wanted I was watching, um, I'll never think of the name of it. Uh, hmm, I have to look it up. I was watching a video this morning. It was older, like maybe over a year old, of a gal who was uh, making a, a really fancy crazy quilt patch or piece. And apparently she was doing a challenge. So she probably belonged to some kind of group that does that kind of thing. She was making a bird, and um, it was pretty. Oh, my gosh, it was so pretty. And then she was making little flower motifs to put on, and each motif had a couple of layers of, for the flowers and had some different laces for the leaves, and then it had um, the bird that was sort of uh, puffed, you know, it was puffy. It was filled with something so that it was kind of puffy. And the tail of the bird was two big pieces of lace that she had dyed. So it looked like long, long tail feathers. It was so pretty. It was really gave me some ideas. I haven't done a lot of hand work in a long time. But I really wanted to for this cover, at least one of them. The other one, I'm going to do something similar, but I'm not sure. I 
I just saw Kathy Berg's um, notification pop up. I thought I was picking a good time where there wasn't somebody else I wanted to see. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, continue. I'll have to go watch her later. And if you feel like you need to go watch her, go right ahead. I don't mind. I've watched some of Lizzie's. There's been so much going on around here. I haven't had time to sit and do much. In fact, I wasn't sure I was going to do this today, but I thought I got today and tomorrow without anything on the schedule. So I just want to take a little time for myself. New computer arrived yesterday, and I haven't even opened the box yet. I'm trying to wait until maybe tomorrow to unbox that. And I have a, um, I didn't order a, um, I ordered a desktop computer, and I did not order a monitor because we have a nice little monitor that's, it's like hardly been used, but it's not new. You know, we've had it for a little bit. I'm not sure where the cord is. So I got to find find the cord. I thought I'd try using it before I, you know, just went ahead and bought a new one. But um, I have a feeling I'll end up getting another one. Oh, I like how that looks. That looks good. That's exactly what I wanted. I like it. <clears throat> yeah, Lizzie's Crazy Quilt series. I saw you. I saw yours, um, Janet and. A couple other people who had sent their um, patches in, or their blocks in. It's pretty cool. She's just the sweetest person. Oh my goodness! I just I get so tickled watching her. I'm just going back and tacking this down a little bit better, so it doesn't come up. So the other thing this lady made was um, the little flower motifs. And she had some flowers. And I know I've seen these before. They, they almost look like felt or like thick paper. And she got them at um, Hobby Lobby. And they're uh, supposed to be um, hydrangea flowers. And they're the thing, you know, they feel kind of like velvety or felty. And she just pulled the little flowers off of the, uh, the, the hydrangea that she had gotten there. And then she was using those. And they look so cute. And then layer, layering them with some ribbon roses and what have you. And the leaves, like I said. And they just really look cute. Okay, this is almost done. And then I could put this aside until I'm ready to put the book together because I'm not ready to do that yet. I actually have two forest journals I'll probably finish before I get back to the sewing because the forest journals are closer to being ready to put together. The sewing, I have all the sewing stuff or a lot of sewing ephemera to go in, but um, I've just got the pages and that's it. I haven't really put anything together. And I've added some beads. There's some beads on these flowers. I, can't, I don't know if you can see that. I didn't add a lot of beads, just this fringe and these right here, basically. Making a tag. Thanks, Miss Gigi. Oh, yeah, I know Laura's been um, working on a lot of stitching things. She's enjoying that. 
Okay, so that worked out. I like that. I have to remember that idea. This works good as a border or frame. So I think that's done. And then I put this little, this will go like this. Now see, this isn't going to show very much on the front. So that's one, another reason why I went ahead because that's about how it's going to be. You know, it's going to be about that close to the lace on the edges. So it's not going to show too much. It's just going to throw a little bit more color on there. But then it'll be on the rest of the journal. So I can put this away for now. And this, this will be a hardback book. So, so that can go back in its bag. When that color almost makes you dizzy looking at all that at one time. Okay, so much for that for now. Where's that going? <clears throat> a little piece of lace goes in my little piece of lace box and then while I'm at it I got my drawer my, my uh, needle drawer out because I need to get some different needles out this is just a little little needle real simple one Nothing big about it. Just has some felt in it. Different kinds of needles. I need a back out just a little bit. You're giving them away tomorrow night. You mean on a, on a stream or Becky on a stream or um, as gifts? There's where all my big needles are. I was looking for those. I didn't even realize I had them in here. Those are some. Look at this big honker. Well, I'll tell you what. That is a big needle. <laughs> I had this one <laughs> one yarn. I call it a yarn needle. It's not quite that big, but. One yarn needle that I've been using for everything because I couldn't find my other ones and I re remembered this was in the drawer. I use I like long needles because they're easier for me to hold. And I'm used to using beading needles, which are very long and very thin. And I, I really enjoy using those. I can't really use these little short ones so much anymore. This is how my needles usually look. See how bent that is? <sighs> and all my beading needles look like that. <clears throat> okay. Okay, that looks like a good, good. Yep, yeah, I'm going to keep that out. Doll needles. Pins. Yeah. All right. So that can go back. Need all those out. Okay. And those where I can get to them. Just want to do that while I was thinking about it. Okay. So now I want to show you something you may have seen before. In your live, you're going to give them away. That's nice. This is a little, it's pretty blingy. It's old. I've had it for a while. And you can see it's starting to, the bling starting to come off. But what this is, it is a business card case. So 
So it has a little latch. You just push it down and it comes open. And it's meant so that you could put your business cards down in there. But I use it to keep needles. This is what I use this for my beading needles. So you can fit a good amount in there. And um, I usually take them out of their packages and put them on this piece of um, interfacing. It's pretty stiff. No, actually, this is interfacing. This is a piece of polyester felt. But you can see how crooked my needles get, my beading needles get. So um, if you put, if you take them out of the package and do it like this, then you could fit quite a few in there. If you leave the packages on, then it's a little bit harder. It gets too full. Or if you use something thicker like this a little piece of fleece, then it, it, it gets harder. But you can put a lot of needles in there. And I use, that's my, um, my, my beading, my beading needles. I just had that out because I was using it on my uh, top there I was working on. I have no idea where my scoop is. I have this little silver scoop and I have little spoons and all my beading stuff is over on the other side <clears throat> of the room. I'm trying to figure out how to, um, well, I will be trying to figure out how to set up my, my um, broadcast so that it can once I get the new computer set up, I'll take the laptop that I'm using now and put it on the other side of the room and leave it there. That way, if I want to be over there showing something or doing something, I can just hopefully switch over. I had to figure out how to do that with myself be being invited into the, the, the room or whatever. So anyway, there's that. And there's that. This is what I do with projects. When I'm working on something and I get tired of it, I put it away for a while. And um, that's what this is. This is a bead embroidery heart that's meant to be a pin, a brooch. And it's almost done, actually. And you see how big it is. And that's what this is. So this is a project box. I used to use, years and years ago, they had those um, AOL tins that your, your AOL uh, disc would come in. And they're, they're fairly thin. I still have a lot of those. So I, I have those. And these are, uh, these are made for, um, you can get them like at, oh, just about every place that sells gift cards because it's made to, for a gift card to fit down in there and they have different, different kinds. So now I, you know, I still have a lot of those that I use occasionally when I don't have it on my tray. Okay. Now let's see. What else was I going to do? Oh, I got these in the mail the other day and they're uh, a 30, a set of 30 uh, unique colors, permanent, non-toxic from Arteza. 30 fabric markers premium and they have two tips and the main reason I got these get that rid of that glare let's do this is because I had this idea to make some pouches well I already make pouches but I want to make some pouches out of this uh, out of this canvas that I have so much of that I was showed the other day that my um Where's my book? I've lost my okay. the canvas that I use a lot on my on my journals because I have so much of it. So I want to make some some long like pouches that are big enough to put a big pair of scissors in a um, well thanks Janet uh, and um, 
you know, a, a ruler that a ruler will fit in along with a big pair of scissors. So I want it to be long and narrow and I want it to have artwork on it. Some of my um, some of my doodling work, I want it on there. So I got these to try. Now I have plenty of fabric medium that I can mix with paint. I have my paint pens and um, all that. But I, I did, I did, I wanted to try these. And I'm really pleased with just the little testing that I did with the shading. Mm. That one probably needs some more pink in it. But look at how, you can't tell, there. I'm just kind of playing around on these little pieces. And it doesn't go through because this is pretty thick. So I was just having a little play time with it trying it out and these are these are really i like them they're pretty nice i i've been so pleased with all of their products that i have so far i have a few i have a few of their products i have their paint pens i have these now um i think i've got some what else do i have i have something else can't remember but these have two points they have like a little bullet or a bigger bullet point, but it's still real pointy on the on the tip. And then they have this little skinny fine one, which I was really excited about. So they're they're they blend. Now I wanted these to dry overnight before I did anything else to it. Because when it's not all the way dry, they still will blend, keep blending. And I wanted it to they yeah, that's looking pretty good. I wanted to see what it would do after it was dry. And these are pretty juicy. Okay. I don't know if that's picking that up very well. But in person, it looks it looks pretty blended. Better than anything else I've done on a piece of fabric before, besides using acrylic paints with the uh, medium. But these are real, you know, this is perfect for if you're if you're doing a whole big thing and then i thought well i wonder um th there's no white this is a this is a it's called what is this called i saw it oh it's on there dolphin gray so that's probably the lightest color there is well these two are fairly light but yeah that's probably the lightest color there's no white so i went back with my um paint pen and put in these highlights here and um, that worked fine you know that worked fine so I was just you know I was pretty excited to get these so I, I see some things in the future with that I'm really I really want to make those uh, one of those um, I lost the box one of those um, pouches like I was saying and I want to put some of my artwork on it. So now I don't usually keep things in the box that they came in. I don't know why, but I don't. That's why I never know. <laughs> like when I buy certain um, digitals or something like that, unless I just happen to remember, I have no clue where they came from because I don't keep packages. I don't keep packaging. I put everything together. <clears throat> usually and use it like that so that I just wanted to show those right quick and I I'm trying to think of how much these were and you know what I can't remember but I think I ordered them on Amazon so Amazon will know <laughs> okay so that's that now the other thing I want to do <clears throat> is pull some things out of this box well i'm trying to get i'm going to try to get to the bottom of this box and let me zoom out some more i'm just kind of hodgepodgey today you know i've used um <clears throat> excuse me i've used uh my ink tense pencils uh with a fabric medium Excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, still gunked up. 
with fabric medium. Uh, I tested it one time on a dish towel, on a, um, I call them flower sack towels. And um, I, I put a design on there and I used the ink tense pencils with the, with the fabric medium and, and painted on there with those. And it stayed. I mean, you know, it did fade eventually, but it stayed really well. I mean, it, I was surprised. So that was pretty successful. So, you know, I wouldn't mind doing that. Okay, now I'm just kind of digging through this box. This is a tatting. I have to show you this. It's pretty cool. This is some tatting that my friend Melba, her, I think her grandmother made. I talked about Melba before. She passed away this past year. So um, she was always giving me stuff. And this is one of the things. I have like three balls of this. Can you imagine how long it took to tat that? That's amazing. I, can, I don't tat. I've tried it a couple of times, but it's one of the things I never could get interested in. I guess because I crochet. This is just some crocheted edging that I've done. I'm not even sure what else is in this box. And there's some more crochet edging. More crochet edging. Oh, I love this pattern. I've used this so much on the bottoms of towels. See? Isn't that pretty? I like making it too. It's it's pretty pretty fun to make. There's some more crochet. There's some little crochet pieces. Oh, I wonder where these were. <laughs> these are just little um, lace appliques. Little lace pieces. That's pretty. I have to use some of those. Okay. Now, I go to well, I have in the past gone to thrift stores and a lot of times, almost every time you go in, you can find shears, which are curtains that you can see through. You can make canvas swatches and hand sew them together and use fabric markers. Oh, yeah, cool. So, hi, Cheryl. Nice to see you. So I, you know, I buy, I'll buy the uh, shear and then I cut it up and use it for other things. Lots of things you can use it for. And then, um, oh yeah, this is, this box has a lot of little things that I found. Here's a piece of crochet. This is real, um, Oh, I don't know how kind of slinky feeling. I don't know what they've used on it. It's probably some kind of speed crocheting or something like that. But that's crochet. That's pretty. I think this will probably be on the cover of, of, of a use the whole thing on the cover of a journal. There's some more crochet. Now these, these are so sweet. Oh, thanks. That alphabet block tree was made for my mother-in-law and you can't really notice it in the picture but the bottom row of blocks it says granny and then there's another one uh, another maybe the next row up or something it says kids and then i think i think there i think up the top it might say joy i can't remember but um i made that for her oh years ago and uh when she passed away i, I brought it home this is so is so sweet. I'm gonna hold it way up here and hope you can hope it'll show it. There you go. Look at that. It's very thin little fabric. The applique is little tiny stitches, and it's just so sweet. It's on a on a on a napkin, and I have two of them. So I'll do something with those at some point. Here's the back. It's all hand done. And that's what some of these are. They're little napkins or whatever that have <clears throat> hand stitching on them. Yeah, well, at our, our Goodwill, they have all the curtains hanging on one row. And you really have to go and look through there. But I found some pretty, pretty neat stuff. Look at this sweet one. 
It's like on the on the wait, let me show you. See? Here's a cute little one. Yeah, there's four of these. I might not, I might, you know, I might not use those. They might get to be used for real. And then here's a pretty crocheted edge. And I used this, a corner of this on a journal already. That's kind of, look, it turned out real pretty. Okay, now I'm getting down to where more where I want to be. Um, here's some, look, now this was a curtain. Look how pretty this is. I can find the edge. Somewhere. Here we go. This one I want to show. It's got little spots on it. See? So pretty. You know what? This was not a curtain. This was this was this was from a wedding dress. This was from a wedding dress that I had to cut off. That's what that was. All right, we're getting down here. Here's more crocheted stuff that I've done in the past. There's what I was looking for. Here we go. I like making these flowers. Um, I used to do, I used to make um, dish towels and, and um, hand towels decorative hand towels for your bathroom and I would use these plus I use them on pillows and I'm going to show you how to make one of them I thought you might like that here's some more curtain material uh, some more of that same pattern of embroidery or uh, crochet here's some more crochet some more crochet now this is a curtain, if you can see this. It's a sheer, and it has this, these things are embroidered on there. This is very pretty. That will make something pretty at some point. This is a napkin. It's just a piece of uh, jacquard type. And here's everything in the bottom. Here's another rose. This is made from curtain shears. And actually, I think these were probably faded. So they look like a dusky rose color. And I thought, that's perfect. Here's a white one that's made out of a heavier fabric. It's kind of smushed. It was on something. I don't know what. Here's a rose bud. Whoops. Come here. So, you know, I would have these on, uh, like on a pillow in a set, you know, so that it looked real pretty. <clears throat> and that's not, okay. I wanted to find the roses so I could show you the finished one. So all this goes back in here, and then the other box has the actual stuff in it. <laughs> but this is good because um, at least I... I haven't been in this box for a while, so now I know where this stuff is if I when I'm ready for it to use it. I have a big cabinet that's full of this kind of stuff. Or full of boxes like this, shoe boxes. Just stack one on top of the other. And it's one of the things I haven't really gone through very well since we moved. So it's pretty fun because when I go through there, I find stuff I haven't seen in a while. of like new stuff. Okay, now. Okay, like, like this is a sheer. Isn't that pretty? It's got the little fertile on there. That's the one that went with those. And I'm going to... And these were this color. They're not, I did not have to dye them. So this is like a, a dark, burgundy. it's like a burgundy color. 
and then this green i didn't have to dye it it was already that color let's see what else is in here okay there's a pretty pink all right and this is what these leaves are made out of I think I'm going to, um, take a piece of that. And piece of this. So what all I've done is cut from side to side. So, so see, this is a big, a big a long piece and that's how long is this this is uh 60 inches so that that's how wide that curtain was was 60 inches and the um i cut it about uh three inches wide about three inches wide <clears throat> so oh that's some of this Okay, that's all I need out of there. Get rid of this. Okay. Jennings check that out I don't do this as much anymore I do have something I want to um, I have a pillow that I want to make some for and I didn't want that particular color so see if I can remember how to do it Where are my scissors so I, I take that piece and like I said these are about this one is only about 40 inches wide so it's been cut in half but um, 40 inches and this one is uh, one two three this is four inches wide so obviously the, the wider it is the bigger flower it's going to make yeah I'll check that out Cheryl okay so and you have to cut this you can't tear it you can't tear it it will not work so I just cut it at an angle, pretty sharp angle on one end. And then this is a little tricky, but it's not hard. The reason I cut it at an angle is because if you see on this, um, See how this looks kind of airy and not just folded flat? See right there? To get it to do that, you have to do this with this little angle trick. So you cut it at an angle, and then you take these edges and you match them up all the way to the end. And what that does, it kind of, it kind of makes a bias out of the fabric. Once you get it going, it's not hard, but to get it started, it seems really awkward. So that's all I'm doing. I'm matching these two edges up, and I'm just going to go ahead and take a stitch there to hold it together so I can, till I get it going really good, and it's not so bad. And I'm just using a single thread. All I'm doing right now is, is basting these edges together so that they'll be easier to work with. You could do this all at once, the gathering, the winding part or whatever, and the uh, and this, but it just seems really awkward to me. So see what's happening here. I want these edges to be together. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but you know. 
So I'm creating a bias, a bias on the fold. And that keeps the fabric from laying quite as straight. It's sort of like whenever you're folding, you're trying to fold up a big piece of fabric and it it won't the edge of it won't fold flat because you've got the um, you, you've caused it to lay bias. That's it's the same thing. Now we're just doing it on purpose. So see what starts to happen. Is instead of lying flat, it just looks it just stays kind of puffy. I don't know what other word to use. Does that make sense at all? Now see if I were going to do this all at once, I could I could pull this as I'm going. See what it does? But I'm not going to do that yet. So all the way down through here, I'm just holding these two pieces together at an awkward angle and stitching them so that it so that they stay together. See how it's looking? It's kind of awkward, but that's all it is. I'm just bringing these two pieces together, even though that's not how they want to go, and just doing a running stitch. I'm doing kind of a, a bigger, a biggish stitch. <clears throat> it doesn't have to be real tiny because I'm going to pull it, just like I did a minute ago. I'm going to end up pulling it um, when I get to the end of the line. Hi, Janet, again. <clears throat> I'll see how long I can stay in, in the screen. Well, this stuff does fray pretty easily, so you kind of got to give yourself enough room so you're not right on the edge of the fabric stitching because it'll just come out. Okay, I'm going to go ahead at this point. I've gotten far enough along. I'm going to go ahead and start gathering this. All I did was just pull that thread. And when I get all the way to the end and the thread's all pulled up tight so that it sort of is gathered, well, not sort of, it is gathered, then I will go back and wind it up so that it turns into a flower. These are real easy to do. I, when I used to use them so much, I would sit and do a bunch of them while I was watching TV. Because it's pretty portable once everything's all cut. Now, let's say you wanted to uh, make a, a flower that um, was uh, variegated, where it had different colors in it. That would you could easily do that. You'd start with um, let's say start with a darker color in the middle or at the beginning, and then instead of doing this whole thing the same color, just add the next uh, color. You could determine, you know. If you want a whole lot of dark in the middle or just a little and just go from there and then add as you as you want the color to change and just keep going and then when you were done and you wind it up the colors would be in order around the rows I don't think that made much sense the way I said that <laughs> Um, well, this piece that I'm using right now was 40 inches. And if I just started it, you could already see 
I could, I'm not even to 40 inches yet. I'm only halfway. I'm only at 20 inches now. And it's already making a good size flower. It really depends on, um, see, I could stop here if I wanted a, a loose, a real loose flower. And that would be plenty of, plenty of length. So it just, it's kind of like a trial and error thing as to what you need. Now, if I were making a, and I'm going, I am going to make a small one. If I were making a small one, this, this would be much more narrow. And obviously I wouldn't need as much fabric. So it's kind of like, you know, if you, if you start gathering it as you're working on it, you can kind of tell how much you want it to be. But, um. And this 40 inches, I think, is going to be too big for what I'm doing. So I'm probably only going to do a few more inches and then see what happens. I hope that wasn't a great answer, Miss Gigi. But it's pretty true. It, it just depends on you know, what kind of fabric you're using. You can use any kind of fabric to do this. Just do the same process. It'll just look, it won't look as, as fluffy. And um, what's the word? Romantic, I guess. I don't know what word to use as, as this does if you use the stiffer fabric. But you can. You can use whatever. Lace. You could use lace. Oh, they're really pretty. Let's see, what else have I used? Lace, um, satin. I've used satin. Now, I'm not going to, I did, I pulled this as tight as it would go. I, pull, I drew up the thread as tight as it would go, and then I put a knot. So now I'm just going to cut this off. So see, I didn't use, I used half of it. I used 20 inches is what I did. And well, let's see how this one ends up. Then what I do is, um, and I'm sure people do it different ways, but this is how I do it. That's all I know to show you is how I do it. Now, this is going to be the, the top of the flower. So you can see it looks a little messy. See all that sticking out? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn all that down. I'm going to push it all down. So this is what you're seeing. Put all the fuzzies, all the edges underneath so they don't show and at some point you've got to find something to hold hold on to so uh, this is the this is the beginning where I started so I'm going to hold that because that's going to be the center okay now what I normally do is I take that first edge that I started on and put that down like this because I don't want that little point sticking up. If I can hold my needle. Okay, so that's that's what I've done. I've taken this little point, that was where I started. I put all my, as much as I can to the, to the this I'm working on the back. So I'm putting that there. Now, my thread is still connected. I'm just going to grab this point and bring it down. I'm just getting that point out of the way. I don't want it sticking up in the middle of the flower. And what it also does is it kind of gives me, a, and I'm just going to stitch that just to hold it. It kind of gives me this nice little, see right here, kind of gives me this nice little heart. So I can start rolling this around it. At this point, I'm going to take my thread back down to the other side. So I'm just going to start rolling this around. And this is thick. It's real thick down there. 
So you just kind of have to deal with it, you know. And um, this is just going to be a smaller looking flower. And you can roll it as tight or as loose as you want. You just got to try to keep it even at the bottom. I kind of want this to be, uh, it's going to be from a si like a side view of the, of the flower. I can get it. It's fiddly. It's fiddly, let me tell you. Uh-oh. I'm losing stuff. Okay. The idea is I'm keeping this like the bottom of the flower. I'm keeping hold of it so that it doesn't get away from me. Okay. And that's as far as that's going to go. And now I'm basically just, this flower is not going to stand up like this. It's going to lay down like this on what I'm doing. So I'm keeping that in mind. And all I'm doing is I'm just going through all these layers to hold them together. And this part's not going to be seen, so I'm not too worried about, whoops, how messy it looks. So, I'm just stitching back and forth through there. Well, I'm trying to. Some days you're just fumbling, you know what I mean? Those curtains did turn out pretty, Becky. I thought they were really nice. I have a hard time with curtains. I mean, not making them, but deciding on what color and what pattern and everything. I'm the same thing with carpet. Our previous house, we needed new carpet the whole time we were there. We were there almost 20 years. Well, I guess we were there 17 years. And the whole time, I complained all the time about the carpet. And we never did get new carpet because I couldn't decide what I wanted. Isn't that awful? So I was happy when we moved in here and we had hardwood floors and tile and uh, carpet in the bedrooms, which was just fine and didn't have to worry about it. <laughs> so. But those, those curtains you made, they're very pretty. You did a nice job. This might not have been the day for me to do these. I'm so... My fingers are fumbly today for some reason. Okay, I'm going to stitch this down so it doesn't pop up. But this is basically how you do it, you know. You um, you just kind of have to manipulate the fabric to look the way you want it to look. But, um, and on this one I have, it's a little bit more gathered than this one was. But, but you can see it's the same process. This one wasn't as gathered as much as this one. So it didn't give me as much foo -foo, fluffiness on there. But it's the same process. You just wind it until, you know, it looks like it should look. I, I don't know any other way to explain how to do it because uh, it's just, that's basically what it is. Okay, so that's good enough. So this is how this one is going to lay like this on a pillow. Look at all these. Yeah, that's the side I want. And it's going to have a um, green piece, which I dropped. Oh. Okay. 
Well, sometimes, some days my hands don't work as well as other days. So how do I want to do this? I think I want to pull this up. Yeah. Okay. So I'm figuring out on the go here. And what's fun to do? You know, I, I often wondered, somebody asked me one time, why do you like to sew so much? Oh, fiberglass curtains. Oh, yeah, I hated those things too, Cheryl. Someone asked me one time, why do you like to sew so much? And I got to thinking about it and I thought, you know, I like to sew because I like to take, I like the process of taking a piece of something that's flat and making it into something that's not flat and that's usable. I, I like to do all kinds of crafts. But I like I like to make things that are usable. It makes me happiest. If I can decorate something up and, and it's something that can be used and will be used, I like that. I'm just going to anchor this on the back of this flower. Pretty high on the flower because I'm going to pull it around to the front and I want it to stay in in one spot so I'm just putting it together Okay, now I'll see if this is going to work. So I want this to lay like this. And then I want, I want this to come around. Come on, flower, work with me here. This way. So I'm taking a stitch in this just to anchor it, and then I'm going to pull it, hopefully. I don't know if this is going to work. Let's see. It's so slippery. I might have to stitch it up here. I know another way I could have done it. Let's let's see. Where's my front? Here's the front. So now I've got that wrapped around, and I think I'm going to go back through and really anchor this edge so it won't slip down. I'm trying to keep. I'm trying to make it so it covers the the raw parts. So I'm just gonna. A tiny stitch there. I don't think it's going to show anyway, but and then just that way it won't slide down. I can anchor it there. And then bury the thread. Now, so that. See what I'm trying to do? I want this to look like it's laying flat, and then I want this to look like it's the, the what do you call that part? I can't think of it. Not calyx. It's where the, maybe it is calyx. Yeah, I think it is the calyx. Well, hold on. 
Pin, pin, pin. I need a pin. Did anybody watch um, Nick the Booksmith working on a fabric moth? I think it was just in the last few days, unless I got my dates wrong. Where's my thread? I've always wanted to do that. I mean, I've seen a lot of people do it, beaded ones. It, they're kind of made similarly, but they're beaded. And it, it was pretty cool. Okay, Becky. Thanks for stopping by. I know I ramble on a lot, but I really enjoy y'all coming by. I know I'm not the most, I don't do the most interesting stuff, but I'm glad you're here to chat. Hi, Donna. Buddy Donna. Donna was the first person on my first live Actually, she was the only person on my first live. <laughs> so I always enjoy seeing her pop up. <laughs> Thanks, Donna. Working on it. Okay, now where's the front? I've lost the front. This is the back. Okay. Now. Ha, looking pretty good. Now, how do I do this? I think if I just twist it to what I want and pin it, and then I can go stitch it in the back. Come on, get out of the way. Because it will be stitched down, so I don't have to worry about how the back looks. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, that's what I'm wanting. That's what I wanted. How's it looking? What do you think? <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Donna. And yes, Janet is so sweet. So if I... Now the bottom of this stem also will not be seen in the end. It will be covered. So I don't really have to finish it too well because it won't be seen okay let's pin that all right now here we go now let's see if i can stitch it to where it won't show and it will hold it now i gotta keep in mind where the front is yeah, that's showing a little bit right there no it'll be okay okay so i stopped here I'm going to go this way because this is the back and I can just start stitching. I wanted to make some little ones like this, but I don't know. It's pretty, pretty fiddly. Okay, let's see how am I going to do this. 
think. This is a little tricky, but I don't think it's impossible. Sort of have to find a spot to that will pull it so that it will stay wound. So anyway, if you didn't see that um, video that Nick the Booksmith did with the moth, fabric moth, you should watch it. It was, it was pretty neat. It wasn't difficult at all. She did a nice job and it wasn't, it didn't look hard. So I'm going to have to try that at some point. I'm gonna stay. Oh, I gotta, gotta. Oops! I gotta come all the way here. Ah. Got to pull this all the way around. Now, if I don't, if this doesn't look exactly perfect, it will be okay because when I go to stitch it down, I can actually, you know, stitch it like this on the edges and it'll stay where it's supposed to. So that's, that's pretty close. That's pretty close. I'll keep going with this. This whole end here will be hidden, so I'm going to give it a good little wrap and knot it. There. Where's that pin? Kind of looks like a big sweet pea or something. So we'll go. Yeah, when I stitch it down, I'll have to give it another little twist just to tighten it up a little bit. But I think it's going to look cute. Oops. Let's put it on here so you can see how it looks. Okay. Oh, Cheryl, you got to see Nick the Booksmith. She is awesome. 
she really is a bookmaker extraordinaire. And she also has a lot of um, little projects that um, you can do. So there's one. Uh, oops. So it'll be like this. I'll stitch down. And then I'm going to do some more with this color. So they'll be they'll be together with different colors. So Okay. Now that's all I'm going to do on this right now. Just want to show you how you can make flowers. I mean, I'm sure people have shown this before, but and then we'll have some leaves out of this. The leaves are, I'll show you how to make a leaf right quick. They're pretty easy. I just take a piece, fold it corner to corner like this, and that makes a bias. And then I fold it down and fold it down again. So here's your little triangle. Fold it down. Actually fold it over like that so it makes another little triangle. And then fold this one over so that it's a triangle. And then pin it because otherwise it will get away from you. Okay. And then take your needle and thread. Can you hear me all right? I feel like I'm talking really quiet today for some reason. <laughs> oh, bye, Donna. Bye, Cheryl. Thank you all for stopping by. So however big you want the leaf to be, you just do a running stitch across the bottom. So you have this. And then you just gather that up. So it looks like a leaf. Gather it up pretty tight, tight as you can. And then not that. Okay. So then, you know, you can put it wherever you want. Now, if you want this more finished, you would just wrap the thread until you have like a little stem looking thing and then knot it. So you can either do it this way or this way. If you don't want it to be quite as puffy as that, uh, just change the way your fold is so that when you gather it, you know, it's not as puffy. But there it is. Okay. Okay, I'm going to put this away. Oh, you're staying, Donna. Okay. Sometimes I get confused when I lose track of what's going on. I'm still not used to having people with me. I'm so used to being by myself. And uh, doesn't mean I don't still talk to myself, but you know what I'm saying? So anyway, this, this along with, I'm not going to do all the others because they take a while. So, um, but this is kind of what it's going to look like with some other um, 
with some other ones, you know. So let me put this out of the way. But these are really pretty if um, if you purchase something that has this kind of flowers on it. It's often real expensive. But you can see how easy it is really to make them. I mean, it costs maybe, I don't know, $2, $3 for a curtain shear. And you can actually dye them. Uh, let's see, I have some pieces in here to show you. Okay. Yeah, I do. You can actually dye them whatever color you want. Here's some little pieces. These are all dyed. They all start out, that's kind of a sort of an off-white color. Sorry, I had the pin in my mouth. Sorry, sorry. No mouth pins. And these were dyed with, uh, let me think. I think these were dyed with alcohol ink. So there's a blue. Here's, that one's red. You can't really tell very well. Yellow. And then a little bit darker yellow. So, you know, you can dye it whatever color you want with whatever you want to use. Whoops. <clears throat> now, those of you who do a lot of sewing, and I showed these the other day, but I didn't say anything about them, might know what these are. These are great tools. Oh, Janet, you're, you're cooking dinner. I haven't even eaten breakfast yet. But it's, all, it's already 10.30 here in the morning. I still haven't had anything to eat. I did have some coffee. But um, these, are, these are some Tim Holtz ones. But these are actually meant for sewing to use instead of pins. I use them a lot. I just love them. I just bought a big, a big package of them. And they come in different sizes. See, here's a smaller size. But they, they're really good for holding little things together. I meant to show you those the other day when I showed you this, this little magnetic bulb, but I forgot. So let me get some more of this out of the way. And I'm going to pull my... Let's see where I laid it. I'm going to pull my horse journals out and do some work on them. Just need to make some ephemera to go in there a little bit and um, glue some more things in that are already you know I think I did this one already finished working on it not totally but got a lot of stuff done here's one of the things I learned to make from Nick the booksmith I love her ideas Oh, I better go one more here. There. That'll be all right for now. Um, I like to put, uh, I probably said this before, but I like to put little um, insert things in my, in my journals. And um, they're not, they're not very thick. See, this is, this is only, oh, I probably folded it at a quarter of an inch, but it looks smaller than that. Nope, a quarter of an inch, right on the nose. And um, so I like to make these little folders 
or something like this to go in and then put a few things inside it. And I mean, you know, they're fun to make. They're not that difficult. And um, they just add, they just add a, a, a little bit to it. So I might have some of these. And I learned to make these, well, not this exact one, but something like it. And I'm sure other people already did it too, but that's where I learned was from Nick the Booksmith. She's a, she is, she's a very talented bookmaker. So this one, I think this one's as far as it's getting right now. So I'm going to put it aside and work on the other one. I have two of them going at the same time. <laughs> yeah, I do too, Donna. Okay, this is the piece that I cut out of the other book to, to stick in this one. So let's see what we got going here. I might have already done some of it. This goes in the front, so I'm just going to stick this. This will go on my inside front cover. <clears throat> so I'll just stick it here so I don't misplace it. Yeah. See here. See here's the one. They don't. They're not exactly the same, but they're similar. Okay. Let's work on the first half first. Get some glue out. Glue, glue, glue. Where's the glue? I actually, clean my space up. Saturday, I guess it was. I had quite a lot of stuff piled up. I'm already getting it piled up again. Get the goobers off the glue. Make some thumb holes. Do it after it's glued down, but it's easier. Oh, come on. There we go. But it's easier to do it before. I'm just going through here and um, taking care of the things I've already decided to use and have stuck in here. And then once I see how full it all is, then I can go back and add some more things that I want. These are little coffee paper, or coffee, I mean, yeah, coffee filter papers, or papers, ruffles that I've made. 
Is the one knee on there not? I can't really let them stick out over the edge of the page because they'll get too ratty. And this page needs trimmed, I just noticed. This is one of Melody's uh, jelly plate papers, I think. MelodyMade.com. Melody Made on YouTube. Now this isn't an original. This is this is a copy, a scan. But it feels pretty cool, actually. I don't know what kind of paper she uses. This is a parchment type of paper. That's why it feels so neat. Probably what I'll be working on the rest of the time. Get this a little farther along. I've got at least five journals that are ready to put together. Are getting very close to putting together two sewing journals, two forest journals, and then I have one that's just a purple, a purple journal. I'll make this into a pocket or a tuck spot. And then let's see how do this. In my journals, I like to leave a uh, a lot of space for journaling. I don't. I really don't journal myself. I can't seem to stick with it but if I were journaling myself I would expect a journal to have a space to journal in you know some people just load them up with pretty things to look at and that's great but I don't think of it as being really being a journal Unless you want to call it an art journal. I don't want that there because I want to leave this space to write on. And I think this is going to end up being a pocket. This came from Melody, too. A lot of the things that I'm using right now are from Melody Made Sales. And I'm really enjoying them. Am I going to sell your journals? Yes. Um, as far as I know right now, they will be sold through Keisha. I have been selling them somewhere else, but I'm probably going to switch over and have Keisha sell them for me. The other place does a good job. She, um, she sets the prices. She shows them on her uh, channel. She does all the mailing out and all the invoicing and everything. So it, it works pretty well. But I'm doing everything else with Keisha. And her waiting time for me is not that, not as long. So that's probably what I plan to do. Yeah, Janet, I... Um, I showed, I don't know if you saw the, the one I sh where I showed my um, art journal, art journals. That I can do. I can art journal. And I do write some things in there. But um, I have a hard time just sitting down and writing about things. 
I could do it for a couple of days. This glue is not sticky. Do it for a couple of days, and then I'm like, forget about it. That's why I have a hard time keeping a food journal. Even I do, I can do a food journal for like a week, <laughs> and I, and then it just goes off, off the radar, and I'm back to not doing it. Let's see. I need a something here. Okay, so yeah, Donna, I I tend to do that too. Now I've got this other little one that um, it's one that I was gonna sell, but I decided to, and it's getting full of stuff because that doesn't stay in there. <laughs> I keep sticking things in there so I won't forget where they are. But I've decided to use this one myself, so I'm kind of using this for my YouTube info and stuff like that. That I want to remember. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> what are you fixing for dinner, Janet? I just realized I didn't take anything out to thaw yet. I have to do that. We've got company coming Saturday. So I have two gals that come and clean for me once a month. The stuff that I can't do myself anymore. I can't get up high. I can't get down low. So they come and, and just hit the highlights, you know. But they miss their time. She had someone try to break into her house and she got real, real, you know, she got pretty nervous. And that was the day, the night before she was supposed to be here. So I told her, eh, don't worry about it. Now I got company coming and, and I, I need to call her and see if they're going to come, come before Saturday or if I need to do it myself. Try to. I can do the stuff if I don't have to get down on the floor. Or up on a ladder, you know, I could do this stuff. But it takes me so long because I have to, I have to take uh, breaks really often. Oh, it's so irritating. But you know, if I don't, then it's like I just give out too fast and I don't get anything done. So I have to take the breaks, or nothing will get done. Hi, Joycey. trying to find myself and I never can. I don't know how you do that. There I am. Okay. Because yeah. Okay. So I'm glad y'all are just hanging out with me. It's a lot of fun. Which one? This one with the this one with the mushroom, Donna. this. I'm just going to wait. 
And here's some paper that I printed from Nevermore Creations. Isn't that pretty? She has a lot of nice things. It's a, I think I've said this before, it's, it's a um, digital club. She has a couple of them that you pay a one-time subscription amount. And then you have um, a lifetime membership. So, and she adds stuff to them all the time. So I enjoy using that really a lot. And I get things from Graphics Fairy because I like their stuff. And also from Pixel Scrappers. This is a piece of scrapbook paper. I think it's really pretty. <clears throat> what are you cooking up, Janet? Did I miss that? sure how to work. Might not like the coffee filter very much with this glue. Might show through. But we'll see. Where are you, Joycey? Eight forty two. So you're two hours behind to be in the Pacific, maybe? Or the east or the west coast of the US. And that'd be two hours because I'm central. That looks pretty cute. Let's see how that does. Yeah, that'll be cute. Okay. Now do I want to do this side? I think I do. <clears throat> came out like the I sat one day made up a bunch of these ruffles from coffee filters and from um oh what is that stuff called crepe paper and some of them are in different colors and I like this. Okay.
Why do you have to pack up your stuff, Donna? Oh, Donna, I've been through that. That's why some of my stuff was packed up for so long because we determined we were moving. And then we delayed. And then we started it up again. Oh, I was glad I had enough sense to leave a few things out. Otherwise, it would have been bonkers. <laughs> I think I have some <clears throat> skeleton leaves. I should put some. I think I'm going to put some skeleton leaves in here. Just thought about those. This will be a, a, a big pocket. Right. Let's see if these leaves are right here where I can get them without crashing anything. flowers. There's some rose petals. And this is also rose petals. And then that's something. Here's some dogwood. It's pretty. Here they are. bugs in there. <laughs> All right, that's enough of that. Hmm. The Peacock Journal. Over here someplace that started. I bet can go with that. Uh yes, I did. Um 
had some of them for quite some time. I used to um, paint on leaves. In fact, I have a video that shows painting on leaves. So I was always collecting leaves. I think I might use these are kind of busted up. Okay, let's see. So I have, you know, fall leaves and different things that I've saved. I used to paint on those flower petals too. Safia? I know what you mean, Donna. When we moved in here, we had over 300 boxes. Not much over. Maybe like 350 boxes. Because I numbered every one of them and wrote in a book what was in them. And at least 200 of those boxes were my crafts. So. <laughs> Ooh, that's pretty. Okay, I'm glad I thought of those. That looks nice. Like that. Okay. Hi, Chris. Let me show you what I mean by painting on leaves, if I can put my eye on them right quick. Um, I see them. Getting to them might be another thing. Let me see. got on these crummy old house slippers and if I'm not careful I'll break my neck so here we go and, I, and like I said there is a um, there is a video that shows these painting these so here is the first one I can stay out of that black glare and it's some roses painted on there there we go so there's one and then this is the one painted on one of these skeleton leaves. Here's a leaf, a little smaller. And it's a Japanese, come on, Japanese lantern with the bird on it and all that. And you can't really tell in the picture, but there's gold around the edge. So I used to do a lot of these. And the same thing on flower petals. Now, here's the question. How am I going to get this to stay on? Wonder. I have to. Hi, Sherry. Hope I haven't missed anybody else. Let me figure out how to put this on here. I'm probably going to have to use some matte medium, I think, will work.
Anybody ever made any of these skeleton leaves? I never tried it because it seemed like it was too big of a mess. I didn't want to do it. It's easier just to buy a pack. You know, the trick is going to be getting that to lay down flat. I might have to put a piece of wax paper over it until it dries. Just to make sure it stays flat on the paper. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. I actually don't have any. wax paper so I'll end up using this page protector. Now I'm just going to go ahead and put another one over here. Well, I got a little carried away there. And I'm not going to waste it, so... Leave them in colored ink overnight? Oh, to dye them? Yeah. Yeah, I haven't tried that. I have to try that. I have a lot of them. I've had them for a long time because, you know, don't use them that much. So, But I just thought this would be a good place to use them. Okay. Yeah, that's going to have to be pressed a little bit, so. Okay. 
Let's see. Where to put it? Where to put it? Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> what kind of leaf are are you saying, Sophia, that you have the trees that these leaves come off of? If so, what are they? What kind of tree is it? Because I don't think I have any like that around here. Because could be mistaken because I don't go trudging out into the woods. You know what I'm saying? the brush pot down here so I'm just gonna clean this real fast oh I got these new bottles these new spray bottles aren't they neat they just kind of put out a misty spray just got them the other day with the ruffles this is envelope there we go I think I want this in here Okay, so this one is ready to set aside for a little bit, and I'm going to work on the second signature. Um, I ordered the spray bottles from Amazon. They are, somebody had given us a link, and I don't know who did it, but it's the same kind they use in the beauty shop. It has a real fine mist. And you, you pull the trigger down and it keeps spraying for a long time. So you're not like pump, pump, pump. It's pretty cool. I got an alcohol in one and water in the other one. I ordered two of them. And I think they were like maybe six bucks around that. Not too bad. I've wanted some for a long time ever since I saw them at the hairdressers. Okay, Oh, okay. Have to make up your mind what you're doing. Have any lined paper in these books? I 
usually put more um, variety of papers in my journals. I like the uh, ledger paper and yellow legal paper and different things. This one doesn't have a lot of different stuff. What is with this glue today? Didn't want to stay. Sacred. I gotta scroll up and see about these trees. Sacred fig tree, huh? Neat. We just have the regular old maples and oaks and dogwoods and redbud trees. I love redbud trees. My husband's been looking for them out in the woods. There's a strip of woods behind our house. He, he's been looking for the redbud tree so he could transplant some. It's transplanted. He transplanted dogwood, which is really pretty. Let's see. This is going to need a pocket. Go ahead and do this. Peepaw tree, peepaw tree. Wow. I always wondered what kind of tree those were from. My husband tells me, he said, you, you think about the oddest things. <laughs> I said, I guess I do. I'm just interested in everything. One of my previous employers had a cattle farm. And uh, we visited one time to where as far, it, it wasn't close, but you know, it was like an hour or more away. Well, like two hours maybe. So we went and visited his, their cattle farm and spent the weekend with them. And um, we got in the truck and went out to one of the fields where they were doing something with some of the cattle. I think he was putting the tags on their, you know, they put tags on their ears so they can keep track of the, which animal it is. And so I was looking around and I was asking all kinds of questions about, you know, how much property do you have to have to take care of one cow? Things like that, you know, because I just get interested in that kind of stuff. And, um, so then he, the boss, he went out and he was helping the guys with the, with the tagging and his wife and I were sitting there in the truck, just watching, you know, talking. And after he got out of the truck and walked away, she said, are you really interested in that stuff? I don't know what she thought, why she thought I was asking. I certainly wasn't trying to make brownie points or anything. She says, are you really interested in that stuff? And I said, yeah, I'm interested in everything. I said, aren't you? She said, no. <laughs> I'm thinking, well, you should should be it's part of your livelihood you know but yeah i just get interested in things like that just to me i guess oh let's see i need to make a pocket a pocket a pocket a pocket a pocket one more two more Oh, mm -hmm. I'm going to forget where this came from. But it's got a mushroom on it. Somebody sent this to me. I think it was in something I bought as a thank you. But I really don't want that lizard on there, I don't think. I don't know. Did you see him in the forest? He doesn't seem foresty to me.
pretty cool though. I don't know if I want to cut him up or not. Well, I'll have to look that up too. Where's my note? Peepal tree. Peepal tree. If I don't write it down, I will not remember. Yeah, I'm not going to. I kind of like him. I don't want to use him up. I'll find something else. Mm -mm. Come on. I got something. This is. Sorry, I'm looking for something. I'll be back in a moment. This will work. Okay, I have an idea. going to make like a little pocket that looks sort of like a specimen card to put this cattail tag in because it's pretty I like for it to show I think it's pretty it's actually a um, embossing it's an embossed I have an embossing folder for that I like it So I'm going to cut this out and then I'll find some clear plastic to go in there of some kind. Okay, so there's that. Now. Um, just going to use this plastic bag. Sophia, didn't you have a sale the other day? How did your sale go? I think I saw that.
I'm not getting all the chat somehow, it looks like. Oh, no, there it is. So, so I just glued it on the whole back of there so there won't be any edges to catch. And I can just now trim this off. Yes, that's right. I, I was I knew I knew it was on someone's channel and I watched a little bit of it and then I had to go. So that's great. There's a lot of sales going on right now. It's hard to keep up with all of them. Okay, there's that. Now. These are some little doohickeys that I've made up before. Already made up. And put it here. Or somewhere. Like that. Okay. It's a plan. way probably should go the other way but I want it this way so come on what's the deal what's the deal Oh my. Thursday, I have such a busy day. Won't be any crafting that day. I gotta go get my hair done in the morning. Get rid of this red hair I've got. I decided I've always wanted to have red hair, or thought I did. Well, I've learned since then that I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it on me. The color was very pretty. The girl did a great job, but it's not for me. <laughs> so my husband's work Christmas party is Thursday night. 
So I thought, oh, we're going to do something. I'm not sure what she's going to do, but we're getting rid of the red. Hopefully. <laughs> I said, I need to get it changed. I don't want to embarrass him at the show up with clown hair, you know. So that's what's on the agenda Thursday morning. Then I got to, I'm going to go visit my, my um, sister in law. So I got to go get my hair done and come back and get the dog. And, and we're going to, about an hour away to visit my sister in law. I'll leave the dog at my daughter's house, which is right there. So she doesn't have to stay home by herself all evening. And when I'm done visiting with my sister-in-law, I'm going to go visit with my daughter and her daughter. And the Thursday evening is the Christmas party. So they're going to keep the dog until we're done. And then the granddaughter might be coming home with, with us. I'm not sure yet. Okay, I like that. Um, I want... Where's my little stamper? Little stamper. Okay, so there's that. That looks pretty good. I like it. All right, where were we here? Huh, purple? <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> I, had, I had a bet with the beautician about what my husband would say when he saw it. Because I didn't even know I was going to do it. I was sitting there in the beauty shop and looking at a book and I thought, I'm going to get my hair dyed. And she didn't have my appointment set up for that, but fortunately she had time. Well, unfortunately she had time. <laughs> but, so... <laughs> he had no clue it was coming because <laughs> I didn't either <laughs> but now I know I don't need to do that anymore I've already figured that out let's see if I can make a little pockety thing here I'll try to get it back to about where it was. Full of poker chips, plastic, quiet partner, center, small circle. Oh, Chris. Wow, you could do a lot. Thanks, Janet. Have a nice dinner. Thank you for coming. I appreciate it. <laughs> anyway, Chris, um, there's a lot of things you can do. You can actually drill a hole. If you have uh, an electric drill, that will do that. Drill a small hole. Use it as use the pieces as. Um, charms pretty much dangles on things if the center of the chip is smooth you can actually glue things into it like you know cut out a circle and glue it in the center that has some kind of design on it 
and actually stick it in your book or you know do something like that. Um, you can use them for um, page tabs if they aren't too thick. You don't want to do it if they're really thick. But um, you know if you have some thin things, you can use them as page tabs by gluing them just like you would a circle. Like if this was a circle glued on the edge so part of it sticks off, you can do that. Um, there's all kinds of things like that that you could use. Um, Once you start letting your imagination flow. Now, I, I used to do uh, dominoes, those plastic dominoes, that, plastic dominoes that are kind of, they're kind of like a, maybe a fourth of an inch thick and um, real shiny white plastic on the backs. And I used to paint, um, well, I, I stamped, and I'm sure you've seen, you may have seen this before because it, it was pretty popular for a while, where you, you can stamp on the, on the domino and then you can use uh, um, sharpies or paint pens or whatever you want to use to color in the stamp hi Tammy how you doing today? Let's see, what else can you do with those pieces? I'm thinking here. Um, Yeah, I definitely would try gluing something on the center of them and using it on a page or as a dangle or whatever. And you can always paint them. Painted black, if they were painted like a matte black, and then um, you could take uh, um, mica powders or whatever and um, run it around the edges look kind of like a coin and use it for a little frame with a picture or something in the center that's probably what i first thing i would try with them <clears throat> I'm getting tired of making these little. I'm just gonna do this. Silver, yeah. I think they would look like coins, really. Well, what are they? They're like about the size of a silver dollar, maybe? I think they would make, that's a good idea. I think they would work good as a rosette center. Again. Oh, 
Well, hmm. I've too much stuff in the way. I can't get to what I want here without crashing. And I just cleaned this all up. Now I got a mess again. Messy, messy, messy. found this. All it is is just some pages, line pages that were coffee dyed and I just tore them up and this is just a piece of another piece of paper that's just folded over so it's all glued in. The papers are actually stapled to this piece and then this other piece is glued on over top of it so the staple doesn't show. So I'm going to put this in like a pocket or tuck. Do something with that later. Later on. I like that. And this is just a pocket that I made from an envelope. Excuse me. Sorry about that. Took me by surprise. bottles my lids on for a minute here and I think I'm going to stitch something no nah, I'm not gonna stitch I'm just gonna glue
Mm. Maybe I am going to stitch. I didn't forget y'all are there. My mind's working. I don't know why my... Oh, okay. Never mind. <laughs> so I'm going to do a little stitch, I think, around this. of this um, paper. Just a simple little stitch. Hmm, this, pin, this needle must have a burr on the end of it. I can feel it when it goes through the paper. It's sort of dragging. What are you up to, Tammy? Anything? Just behaving. Or anything you want to tell us? <laughs> and the big question, is everyone ready for Christmas? I didn't have to do much this year. I had to make some Corn bags, heating bags that you stick in the microwave or aches and pains or to keep your feet warm or whatever. I made seven of those. And that's really all I've had to make for Christmas. on these journals I really have some well I'm gonna have to get that computer set up that's gonna take a while I'm still not decided if I'm gonna to try to do it tomorrow or not I'd like to get it done I need to find out if that monitor I have is gonna work if I can find the cable for the monitor and if it's going to work all right if not then I'll have to order a monitor Really glad to be getting it though. <laughs> I 
in some ways, yes, in other ways, mostly. <laughs> We usually have, oh, we we celebrate. We've always celebrated opening gifts on Christmas Eve, and um, then Christmas Day we'd go visit and what have you, you know, with relatives. And <clears throat> since my granddaughter came along, we still do that. So. They usually come to our house on Christmas Eve, and it's mostly her, you know, opening her gifts from us, and then there's usually one, two things thrown in for the parents, and so for a little while, it was just the five of us, and then we had a few people kind of sneak in there with us. And some of them are scared to get out right now, so they're not going to be there. So Christmas Eve, I think it's just going to be us. And then Christmas morning, we always go to their house, and she opens her gifts from her parents. And we have our Christmas story and all of that. And then we have... Christmas lunch and usually by lunchtime there are several people at their house because they're very hospitable and they try very hard to if they know somebody who's alone or um, you know doesn't don't really have a family to be with or can't be with they'll get invited so we always have a mishmash of people on Christmas Day, which we like. And I know there's a few coming. But it won't be like it usually is, I don't believe. So you have to adjust. Bake cookies and shop. Yep. Gift card Christmas. When they get to that age, it's like they'd rather have it. So why not, you know? My granddaughter's not going to have too many surprises from us this year because she she loves to play pickleball. She would like to be a professional pickleball player. And she's pretty good at it. She's only 13, so she's young yet. And this would have been a great year for her playing if, if she had gotten to go to the um, competitions, you know, the tournaments. But they canceled everything. And... Um, the two tournaments she did go to, she got gold medals at both. And one of them, she was the youngest player. And she had a partner who played uh, mixed doubles with her. He was the oldest player. So that was kind of cool. But um, she is very good at it. My husband loves to play, but he's kind of had to stop because of his knees are bothering him. But it's a great game. You can play at any age. So this summer, this would have been her first season, really, competing. And getting her status in as what level and all that. So that was kind of a disappointment. But there's, they've still been playing. They have out, outdoor courts where they play and and what have you and but she wanted uh last christmas she wanted a new paddle this christmas she wanted new court shoes but you know that's something you just can't go pick out so she knew what she wanted so they went ahead and got those she hasn't gotten them yet but you know we have them <laughs> and I don't know. I think we're getting our sweater and uh, a couple things I got online, and so it's not it's not a whole lot of stuff. But she's getting to the age where she doesn't think she needs too many things like that. She usually gives us a list every year, and then we pick what we want. But I will tell you something. We did Sunday. We had lunch with them after church, 
and they were talking about um, one of these 3D visor things that you can get. Um, that's Quest 2, I believe is the name of it. And you can play all these <clears throat> games in 3D. And they were talking about how much fun they had. Oh, they were at someone's house who has it. How much fun they had. They had so much fun playing. So we ordered one. But it won't come till after Christmas. They're so backlogged. So we ordered one for them. You can do that when you only have one child and one grandchild. You know, <laughs> you can get a little bit more expensive with gifts and what have you. And, and they've all, all three of them have appreciated it, always appreciated everything we do for them. And so we don't mind, you know. Okay, I don't know if you could see that. Of course you can see it. Oh, I better do a thing. Nine by thirteen pan. Hmm. My son-in-law's birthday is on the nineteenth. That's this Saturday. And we usually go someplace for dinner that he, he wants, where he wants to go for his birthday. And then we go see the lights, the Christmas lights. We have quite a, quite a few large displays in our area, in the St. Louis area. And uh, so we do that. But we didn't do that last year, and I can't remember why now. But we, they went and saw the lights, but not for his birthday. Oh, I know why. Because the travel company that they own, they had a light trip on them one day to see the lights. So everybody but me went because I didn't go on that trip. But this year, he's coming over. They're coming over here Saturday because we're having company. I guess we're going to make pulled pork on the smoker. That's the plan. And some hamburgers for those who don't like pork. Maybe some mashed potatoes and slaw. And some corn pudding, maybe. I don't know. haven't quite decided yet. Okay, there. What kind of cookies are they? I was wanting some peanut butter cookies last night. I almost made them. And then I was wanting some uh, no-bake cookies, chocolate and peanut butter and oatmeal. No-bake cookies. Oh, my gosh. I love those things. But I resisted. I resisted the urge. Magic cookie bars. Is that the ones with the coconut? And um, let's see what else. Coconut. And condensed milk. Sweetened condensed milk. Is that part of it? Yeah. Oh, man. I haven't had those in ages. Oh, my goodness. 
That sounds so good. I got a sweet tooth going on. I don't know what I'm going to I think maybe in a little while I'm going to have some hot chocolate. Maybe that'll help. Oh, those sound so good. Mm. I've been having those since I was a kid. That's an old recipe. You know it. But once you get a good one, you don't always want to use it over and over. Okay, now this goes somewhere. Where does it go? Let's see. Probably right there. Yeah. Yeah. I think it goes right here. Walnuts. See, I'm thinking we put pecans, but that's probably because where we were when I was growing up, we were always near some place where there were pecan trees. You say pecan or pecan? <laughs> Walnuts are kind of strong. I don't like them as much as pecans. They're still good. I think I'm going to put some page tags on this, on, on these journals. I'm hoping if I pretty well cover this with glue that it's going to not crumble. It's not really crumb too crumbly anyway. about that I'm going to put uh, uh, let's see where's my whoops let's see what this will do hmm be all right the way it is, I think. <clears throat> see. I have the cutest little Clips. I don't have very many of them left. Look, isn't that cute? Little teeny one. I have any more. Maybe the last one. Nope, one more. Okay, I'll save it and put in the other journal. And Okay. <laughs> 
How many do you have to make, Chris? Oh, hi, Keisha. Don't yell at me. I forgot again. <laughs> yeah, we're just kind of fiddling around here, Keisha. Nothing too exciting. I'm working on some journals, which you will see a bit eventually. You'll see live in your hands. So, yep. Yeah. Let's see how this is looking. Ah, Keisha. You're lying through your teeth. <laughs> but I don't mind, you know. It's always good anyway. No worries. No worries. It's all good. Now I'm going to look in this new book I got of um, botanical stuff and see if there's anything I want to use in here. I just got this. It's, there, it's really nice, too. I like it much better than the other one. With the Victorian-looking Victorian stuff. Oh, that's nice, Chris. You share them around. That's the best way to be. This one's really pretty. I have the other one. What's the other one called? I can't remember. The... Oh, yeah. Antiquarian sticker book, which it's got pretty stuff in it, too. But um, I think I really like this botanical one the best. And I thought maybe there'd be some stuff I could use in these forest journals. I'm not real big on stickers most of the time. I mean, I like that they stick, that you don't have to glue them. But... Um, yeah, I'm not a huge sticker person for some reason. Dragonflies. Some butterflies. Oh, that's pretty. This is like a frame, but you can actually cut stuff out of the center. That's what I'll be what I'll be doing with it. Cut out shapes and stuff. I don't need a frame. Oh, little bugs. <laughs> Sending some packages out and not much after maybe some crafting. That was a nice pop-up sale, Keisha. Thanks. I thought it was uh, had a lot of nice stuff. Now this looks kind of foresty to me. 
orchids. It blends in pretty well. Some wasp bees, flies, whatever those are. There are some very pretty stamps and or um, stickers in here. Very nice. Ooh. Look at that. Huh? Very nice. And as I empty pages, I'm going to use them to put other things on the store, I think. Because the paper that's under it is the slick paper, the release paper. So anything I make into a sticker, I can put on there. Oh, I've got a whole lot of them. Um, I got some the Tim Holtz bug stamps too. I could be using some of those. Ooh, I like that. Whoop. Someone just came down the steps looking for their mom. Yep, it's about noon, so she's wanting some attention. Couple years in a row, instead of sending Christmas cards, we sent um, these little nutcracker cutouts. So we cut the shape of a nutcracker. I'm not a nutcracker. I'm sorry, a soldier, a Christmas soldier, you know, with the red hat and everything. I cut the shape out of thin wood. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I think we sent out about 20 of them. And then I painted all of them to look like a, like the little soldier. And then on the back, we wrote, you know, Merry Christmas and put the stamp and everything. And we sent it through the mail like that. So everybody was really, <laughs> really surprised when they got a wooden soldier ornament through the mail <laughs> without being wrapped up or anything. That was pretty cool. And then one year we did a little manger scene the same way and sent through the mail. And that was fun. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 
Oh, Keisha. Well, at least you can see her and visit with her. It's so different now since we have uh, cell phones and all that. I can remember when I was in my 20s and we were in Florida. We were day, you know, we were so far away from our families. And we couldn't afford to call. You only called if it was an emergency or, you know, Christmas or something like that. Because it was so expensive. And, you know, everybody always did the thing when you get when you're on a trip and you get where you're going. <laughs> you always call home and ask for yourself. <laughs> so that way they know you were there, but they didn't have to accept the call and it didn't cost anything. <laughs> I think everybody did that. Oh, these are so pretty. Yeah, it's it's hard. It's been it's been tough. It's been tough on everyone. You know, I didn't feel like it was affecting me that personally that much. Um, because the area we are in, they they really haven't had real strict, other than the restaurants, they haven't had real strict uh, rules to follow. I mean, we've only recently, in, in our town, recently had to start wearing masks in, in certain places and all. But, um, and I stay home most of the time anyway, so, you know, it just doesn't really affect me that much. But we have had a lot of friends and acquaintances, several friends and acquaintances, that haven't made it through. And it's been hard. We've had some dear people pass away. That's been hard. That, not because of COVID, but for other reasons. Not being able to attend their funerals or visit with their loved ones. It's been, it's, you know. But we've all stayed fairly healthy. <clears throat> oh, see, FaceTime, that's great. I think about people who are in the military and um, most of the time they do have have the ability to email or whatever they get to do <clears throat> with their families and that's wonderful I mean they're yeah they're not home they're definitely not home and it's hard especially when you have little kids but I can remember when my husband was in the Navy this was in the 70s during Vietnam. And uh, the only contact we had was by mail. And sometimes you didn't get the mail. You might not get something for several weeks and all of a sudden you'd get five or six letters at one time. And you just never knew what, what was going on. At least now they have do have some contact, so that's good. Times have changed so much. Yeah, Chris, this book is pretty cool. I'm glad I ordered it. Oh, look at that. That blended in really well. You can't even see the background. I can I can barely see it up close. Look at that. Oh, I just love this book. I gotta save some of the ones I really like for the other book too. Put a few through here somewhere.
Yeah, it is. The name of this one is uh, the Botanist Sticker Anthology. I like this one way, way more than the other, uh, than the Antiquarian Sticker Book. I, it's like everything in here I'll, I will use. And the other one, maybe not so much. Not everything. You know what? This one's almost worth getting two books. It really is. I'm not kidding. Worth getting two books. Ah, Pansy's Girl in the Woods. There's a little squirrel. Okay, let's see. I'm going to add a little color in there. And yes, my computer arrived yesterday. I have I brought it in. It's sitting in the foyer. And um I'm going to, I think I'm going to try to work on it tomorrow. Uh, I first, I have to find the cord to go with the monitor. I have a monitor. I didn't order a new one. So I'm hoping it will work, but I got to find the cord. I think I saw it somewhere, but yeah, I got to start working on that. But this week's Thursday's going to be really busy. Okay, Joycey, I'm glad you came. Always good to see you. Come back again whenever you just want something boring and quiet. <laughs> oh, this is kind of cool. Yeah, I'm going to, depending on how much I use this, I might have to order another one of these. These are really nice images. A nice size, great colors. Oops. <laughs> you know, we have a family joke. When when Olivia was spend a lot of time with me in the summer, my granddaughter, she would get bored. I mean, you know, this is what I do half the day. And yes, she's a crafting, she's my crafting, my little crafting buddy. Skipped a generation, went, skipped her mom and landed on her. And she is extremely creative. And she always has been, if, even when she was little. She was always, always building something or whatever, you know. So she's always been my crafting buddy. So she'll, she'll craft for a while, and then she'll get tired of it. She doesn't have a long at attention span, actually. So she'll get tired of it and want to do something different. Well, there's nothing to do, you know. We're kind of out in the boonies. She doesn't have any friends nearby. So there's not a lot to do. So she has the we have a Wii. She could play games on that. Um, now, at that time, she didn't have her phone, but she could play games on on my phone or on my little mini iPad or whatever. But um, she'd get bored with that. So she wouldn't know what to do with herself. So one day she says, Grammy, I'm just so bored. <laughs> and I told her, I said, well, Olivia, I'm sorry I'm so boring, but this is what you get. You know? Oh, Grammy, I didn't mean you were boring. You're not boring. Because oh, she thought she'd hurt my feelings. And I just, you know, played it up a little bit. And then finally I just laughed at her and says, I know that you don't think I'm boring. But it's fun to make you, make you twitch. 
So, so it's always been a, you know, anytime she doesn't have something to do, I'll say, I'm sorry, I'm so boring. And she'll just, it's just like a game we play. And she's, oh, Granny, you're not boring. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> oh. She's supposed to be coming over Friday. Hoping she'll help me clean. And my cleaning ladies didn't show up last week. I got some things that need to be done that I can't do very easily. Hi, Josie. Welcome. We're just kind of piddling around here. I'm working on a journal right now I'm in this botanist sticker book, pulling some things out that I think will look nice in it. Ooh, and an ein over the stickers. What are you up to, Josie? Well, there's some pretty blue flowers in here. I got some blue napkins coming that I bought from someone. I can't remember now. All those sales we've been going through, I get lost about who, who I ordered what from. And then when it shows up, I'm just really excited. <laughs> just say, oh, I got this. Look at this. Isn't that pretty <laughs> which makes it fun <laughs> i hear you bella i know just got a little bit more time then i'll take you out feed you lunch well let's see mm -hmm. Oh, I need to sit and look through this book all day. It's so nice. Now, see, I don't think I've, the stickers that I've just now used, that you've watched me use, I don't think I've used that many of the other book, and I've had it for several months. I just haven't done anything that they, you know, I thought they would go with yet. I'm sure they'll be used eventually. But I just got this one, so. I've kind of been doing a lot of shopping here lately. Bought some new markers and some laces and things. And a little bit of paper some fabrics oh wow I was going through looking for something I don't know it might have been Saturday and um, came across some needlepoint stuff I'd done I'm going to try to incorporate it somehow in, in some uh, journals. And then I also, whenever we were moving, one of the things I did was, you know, those paint by big paint by number things that they've had out recently. I got some of those. I don't know, four or five of them, I guess. And that's what I did. One of the other things I did until all my craft stuff got unpacked. And I've got those rolled up, and I think I'm going to, at least one of them I know I'm going to use for for a journal cover. Now, most of them, they were pretty nice. They, The pictures were nice. And the colors were good. And they came out looking pretty nice when they were finished. Well, you know what? Coffee sounds really good right now. But I think when I go upstairs, I'm going to heat up what's left over in the coffee and make some hot chocolate with it. I like to do that. But anyway, I think uh, one of the one of the ones, the, uh, what do you call them, the 
paint my number things, I'm going to use it for a journal cover because it was horrible. It was just awful. It, I tried following the numbers and I don't know what they, they did, but it, it just looked terrible. I ended up basically repainting the whole picture using the colors I wanted to use. <laughs> no, it came out, but um, it was pretty disappointing. The rest of the ones I had from the same company were nice. There's a couple of really nice flower uh, floral pictures that I did, paintings that I did. But they are hard to do because the numbers are hard to see. And um, sometimes it's hard to see where they go, how you know how far they go, and it, it gets real hard to see. But I did enjoy doing them, so I got to get those out before long. And after I get these five journals done, I'll get those out and see what they look like and do something with them. Yeah, Keisha, I'm going to have to stop pretty soon. Go up and take care of the dog and give her some lunch and give me some lunch and get busy cleaning the kitchen and what have you. Yes, Bella, I know you're still there. I hear you. That's all the stickers I'm putting in this one. But I totally recommend that book. It's really, to me, it's it was a good choice. Now I'm just going to flip through here really fast and see if I missed anything. So I think that came out pretty cute. I like that. Added this. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. And then probably after I show you this, I'm going to call it quits for now. Okay. Okay, so now it still has a lot to go in it, but <clears throat> here's what we got so far. I think this is going to be the first signature. And that's a real leaf. Here's a page edgy. There's stickers. Something will go there. There's a little clip to hold him in. I might end up putting some uh, paper clip dangles on these. I'm not sure. Maybe instead of that. So this is mostly owls and mushrooms. That's a print. And this will be a little fold out place. And here's a place to write some notes. Plus a, a tag will tuck in here. Here's a, uh, a tree poetry. When I was in high school, I um, went to state contest, music contest, and I sang this song about a tree. And I need to look that up and see if I could find that because it's a really nice, just the lyrics are really nice. This is another that'll fold out in the pocket. This is the other side of that and another edgy. I call them edgies. Some more mushroom paper. Here's a pocket that's going to need a it's going to need a uh, tag in it. I'll probably do something down here too. Some lace or something. Here's another owl tag. Mushroom. Another pocket. I'll get some fibers. And this is actually, to go in front of the book, I just clipped it on here. Another pocket. Another pocket. Mm 
envelope pocket or I mean a tuck I guess you call it I don't know I call it a pocket Another pocket. Another pocket. Another pocket. Now, I have a lot of pockets because I like to make tags. So I have a lot of tags to go for this one. But it's ready to to go a little farther. I, I can see now more about what's going to be in there. And um, so that one's ready to do more with. Okay, ladies. Well, thank you for being here. I'm going to call it quits for the day. And um, please come. Oh, can you say the sticker book again? The sticker book again. I actually had two here. The Botanist's Sticker Anthology and the Antiquarian Sticker Book. And I'm not saying this is a bad book at all. It has a lot of neat stuff in it, too. But it's a totally different style of things. And there are some things in here that will go with the other one. Like here's some mushrooms and that had some aquatic, aquat, aquat, aquatic, aquatic, <laughs> Could get that out. aquatic stuff in this book, too. Here's some aquatic stuff. I mean, you know, it's, it's not a bad book. I'm just more about flowers, I guess. I see a lot of this is um, what is alphabet. Look how many pages of that. So on each page, they have one or two letters. I guess maybe each page has a letter. Yeah. In different styles, which these are neat to use. But that's a lot to take. That's a lot of space in this book. Taken up. Look at all that. Taken up just by. That's all letters. So I won't use them as much. I probably won't use these. It does have some birds. I wish I could get one of these books with all birds. All birds. All kinds of birds. Three pages of these would be fine. <laughs> Four or five pages of owls would be fine. You know, because that's what, what I like to use. And there's a little bit of tribal stuff, and there's birds and bugs and butterflies throughout. So they're both they're both nice books. I just know that I'll use this one much more for the things that I do. Okay. So I think that was it. Glad you were here. Um, oh, let's see. I want to do one thing before we leave. I want to see if this is dried. Nope, not all the way dried. But I think it's... Oh, you know what I didn't do? I didn't fold that. That's okay, it'll still fit. Whew. Well, that scared me. I realized I hadn't folded this edge. So, But they're stuck down. The edges are stuck down. So I'm just going to lay it here and let it finish drying. Okay, and on that note, thanks for coming by. I will see you again. I'm trying to um, come on every Tuesday about 9 o'clock. 
unless I see that somebody else is on and I don't want to miss. <laughs> but that's my plan right now. It seems to be a, an okay time so that I don't um, interfere with someone else's that I want to see, you know. I mean, there's no way you can, there's no way you can pick a time when nobody's going to be streaming because it's just not possible. <laughs> so thank you for coming. Come back again. Bye-bye. Have a good day.